Today we're going to pin a few insects and so I'd like to show you some of the containers that I'm using uh, to store my insects. I like uh, using some prescription bottles. You take off the, the personal labels on that and just you have your rubbing alcohol in here and the organism is completely submerged and covered. Um, I will take and use any kind of plastic container and you would just dump the insects in any of the containers. This was uh, just a container that we had laying around the house. So, And uh, once I get the insects in the container, I will have my styrofoam handy and I can take the insect out and let it kind of dry just a little bit on the styrofoam or a piece of paper. It really doesn't matter what you're putting them on. Here we have uh, a couple of beetles and a, and a homoptera and in this jar and the locations we should have written inside uh, on a piece of paper and it should be placed inside the container. I have another beetle, a large fly, and another beetle. So ideally I could let those rest or dry out for a little bit, but um, for the sake of time I'm just going to be pinning them right away. Now remember the insect has the three main body parts, the head, thorax, and the abdomen. We want to place the pin on, in the thorax off to the right side a little bit. So if I take uh, my forceps, if, if you want to use forceps you can do that. You can hold the, the insect with forceps and put the pin in. Okay. So I would hold like this with the pin, with the forceps and I grab a pin and I could take the pin and put it through the thorax and so I'm really not touching the insect at all and I push the pin down, just leaving a little room, just a little room, enough for me to grab it. So if I was to hold it up like this, you can see that there is a little room for me to hold the insect, and um, there's more room on the bottom side of the insect than the top. And notice that I have a piece of styrofoam with paper on top of it, and the reason why I put paper on top is because if I push this down on the styrofoam, the, uh, the tarsi of the feet can get stuck in the styrofoam and, and rip the legs off. And so a lot of times I'll use cardstock or just a piece of paper and do that. And I'll push the insect down until the legs come right up next to the body so that the organism, when it dries, it's not going to have its legs, you know, falling down here. It's going to be nice and tight next to the body. And when we put labels on, it won't break any legs off. Okay, so that's a coleoprin. Um, it's the same thing with this fly. Here I have a, a horse fly. So now I'm not going to use the forceps, I'm just going to hold the fly. I grab one of my pins and you can see I have all my pins kind of stuck into uh, the styrofoam so I don't have to reach in and grab it in a bottle, so they're just already there. I find the thorax, I go a little bit off to the side, I look and make sure that it's level both ways. Okay, then I push it down into the styrofoam. Again, I want the legs to be right next to the body. One of the problems I do see sometimes is students will pin it so it's like this. It's not very, I mean, they'll set it, it down like that and uh, we can't put a label on it. So we need the insect higher up on the pin. Okay, so I've got a, a coleoptrin, a beetle, and a diptern fly. And this is a homoptera, it's a little smaller. It's a little smaller, and so since it is teeny, I'll usually lay those down on the paper and hold it with my forceps, grab my pin again, Remember, I'm going through the thorax, slightly off to the side, making sure that when I place it into the paper, that the legs are up nice and close to the body. I can, at this point, if I want to, take a pin and adjust the legs. See, I can move the legs, they're still flexible. And if I want to move the legs into a certain position, and they won't stay there, I can move the legs and leave a pin right next to the legs so I can get them in the position that I would like them in and then when the insect dries and I take the insect off the styrofoam the legs will stay in that position okay um, and I'm gonna do that with this little bugger right here its legs are kinda of poking out so I'm gonna grab some pins I'm gonna move the leg in the position that I want it in and I'm gonna leave it like that and so I'll continue to do that with each of these insects again on this one I'm just gonna grab the insect I'm gonna put the pin through the thorax off to the right. Um, I really don't want to push too hard here. I don't want my fingers underneath. If your fingers underneath you can end up poking yourself. 
So that's why I just got it started and then I'll just push it right through. So let me, uh, we're going to take a, and do a close up of one so you can kind of see exactly on this larger beetle where I'm going to be putting the needle. Okay, so now. All right, so if we're looking at this beetle right here, here's the head. Here's part of the thorax called the pronotum. The thorax extends right about to here underneath the elytra, their wings, and the abdomen extends from here to there. So I'm going to put my pin right about here. See, so I can hold it with my forceps or I can um, hold it with my fingers. Either way, I'm going to push right through there and that's where I'm going to put the pin. Okay, so it will go all the way down to right about there. And I have a pinned coleoptera. Here we have a homopteran which is different than any of the insects that we have pinned thus far. So we have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And we have four pairs of wings, sucking mouth parts. And I'm going to grab by the thorax here, and I'll put the pin slightly off to the side, right on the thorax. And we have a pinned homoptera. See now, remember, I can move it in any position I want now when it dries it wouldn't be a good idea to try to move anything. It will be very brittle and it will break. So that's pinning a homoptera. Here we have a hymenoptera. Remember hymenopterans are ants, bees, and wasps. We have the head and the thorax. And the thorax are going to contain the legs and wings. And then the, the abdomen with the ovipositors or stingers. And so this is a uh, cigar wasp. And we're going to take and move it upright, like so. Again, I can hold it with the forceps. I don't have to use forceps, um, just if you want to. I'm going to find that thorax. I can see the thorax. I'm going to go slightly off to the right side. Put the pin right there. And I'm good for business. But what I might want to do is perhaps I want to move these wings. So I can put a pin here, like that. I can put a pin right here, like so, if I want to spread the wings out. And that will be just fine there until it dries and I can move it uh, to my collection and the wings will stay where they need to be. I can also put one right here by the antenna. Put the antenna down there if I'd like to. Move that one over just a titch. And I have the antenna in a position that uh, I desire. So we've just pinned a Hymenoptera. I've just taken a Lepidoptera and a butterfly out of an alcohol jar and it will be wet for a little while. Alcohol evaporates rather quickly but we're going to need to let it dry just a little bit before we place it on a spread board and spread its wings, put its wings in the position that we would like to have it um, when we present it in class. So. In just a minute, I'll show you how to go through the process of spreading it. But when you get your insects out, particularly your, your Lepidopterans, your butterflies and moths, let it dry out a little bit before we start the, uh, the process of spreading. I've let the butterfly dry, and so its wings are now a little bit more pliable. In other words, I, they're not sticking together as much. And so I'm able to move the front wing away from the hind wing. And, and you really don't want to touch the wings that much because your hands will take the scales off. And so if you want to, you can use a forceps to handle it and move the wings just a little bit. But what I'm going to do now is pin this and place it you know, on the spread board and use the spread board with some card stock to, uh, to hold the wings in place. So to do that, you'll grab some scissors and you'll take the card stock cut some little strips. I'm going to cut four. I like using four strips per butterfly or moth. Just cut it straight across like that. You got your four strips. And this is what's going to hold the wings in place through the process of pinning. Okay, let's, let's get started and see how it works. Okay. 
Okay, now you'll come in. All right, so I'm going to grab the insect. I'm going to place the pin again just a little off to the side in the thorax. I'm going to put the insect like so on the spread board. In fact, you might have to put the wings out just a little like so when you're putting the, the butterfly on. I can move the wings around a little bit, you know, with the forceps, probably a little easier, or you could use a pin. So now, once I have this in position, I'm going to take and lay a piece of cardstock over the top of the wings. I'm going to put it right underneath the antenna here. And then I like to use sometimes the pins, and I'm going to grab one of the veins very, very carefully. I'm going to pull that wing up. I'm going to push down right there and I carefully put the pin through the cardstock. I'm then going to grab another pin, pull up the hind wing on the same side, and then I'm going to push down and pin the cardstock like so. I'm going to do the same thing over the top here. Try to get that wing as flat as possible. One thing we could have done before we even did this, and I do this usually with a lot of the bigger, bigger moths, is you could put the a pin on either side of the abdomen, like so. So that way, when you're moving the wings from side to side, it doesn't, you know, twist the thorax and the abdomen around. So I got one side. Now I can lay another piece of cardstock right here like so. I'm going to grab forceps. If I move it like this it might be a little easier for you to see. And just to kind of show you sideways here, I'm going to grab a vein. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to push down here. And I'm going to put that pin right next to it. That was a little far away. I actually probably should move that a little closer. You don't want to go through the, the through the wing. Okay, then I'm going to grab the wing underneath here. Hopefully I can. Let's see. There we go. Oh, a little bit of rippage. I'm going to try not to do that. There we go. I'm sure that you guys, once you get the hang of this, you'll be much better than I ever would be at something like this. You have much better dexterity then than my big old fingers. So we'll set the other one there. Put the pin down. Now you can see we have all four wings that have been pinned down with cardstock. And let's leave these here for at least three to five days. And I'm going to go back through and make sure each of these pins are in nice and good. And before, you know, when you're finished with this, before you leave the class, you would want to write your name, like Andy Gump A4. That way you make sure that you get your insect. And I have a number of these pin boards that are available. I won't check them out so you, so you can use them at home, but you're welcome to come before and after school and use them. This is spreading a Lepidoptera. Today we've been pinning the insects. To wrap things up, we've had uh, containers that we've used to trap our, to put our insects in to preserve them before we pin them. We have a container to put our insects in to take a look at them and then take them out. We place them on our styrofoam and paper, let them dry a little bit, and then proceeded to pin. We have forceps to help us you know, manipulate the insect and move them around. You can get your insect pins from me. Each of you get 30 insect pins. We had the cardstock so that we can cut little strips to spread our lepidopterans, and of course we have a spread board, spread boards you can use at school. So I will teach you some other techniques a little later. Uh, pointing is a technique for small insects, but until then, um, keep on collecting.